So here we are continuing to build up flats underneath our EPS vector line art and trying to do it as efficiently as possible. But I've got a lot of individual shapes, like all of these stripes for the, the grading on this kind of Renaissance inspired helmet. So I'm going to take a dark purple, I'm going to use W to select the wand, I'm going to select from my vector because everything's nice and clean. Hold down shift, and then every other one of these, I'm going to select to fill. And if I accidentally select the black, I just do Command Z and I target that selection a little bit better. Zoom in when I have to. The more detailed shapes you have, the longer it takes to color. Then I go to flat color. I'm going to hit my paint bucket. G is the shortcut for that, as long as you have the paint bucket selected. And because white connects all of those, it's going to fill them in. Now I'm going to take a blue. I'm going to do all the others. So wand, vector layer, hold down shift. I have to deselect with command D what I had before. And I've actually, right now I'm kind of partial to just flatting with crazy colors. And they actually influence the end product a little bit, which is kind of fun. In fact, I'm going to cho choose a different, a different blue. Then go to flat color, G, and fill in. What about for the shadows of the helmet? So I'm going to use, let's see, this magenta -y purple. Drop it in. At any time I can turn off my vector layer and see what my actual flats look like, which are just floating on a a piece of white bread, you know, that white background. <clears throat> what about the beak? That's where I'll use, I guess, the yellow. Though that feels generic. And I can start maybe to do some of these sunbeams too. At least those of them that are fully contained. You see any areas I still need to fill in? Nope. All right. How about some light green, other bits of the skull? All right, what about some of the blue do I want? This darker green.
Now, this is kind of the most annoying part when you have just lots of connected shapes like in here. You can just use your lasso if you want instead of using the magic wand and selecting all of it and you just keep your lasso within your black lines. So there's no wrong way to to fill in your flats. You just want to keep your vector clean. So the alternate way is to use the magic wand, right, and then select with shift all of these little shapes. As long as you're just filling on your flat color layer, it's all fine. And some people just like to use their paintbrush and fill things in. But then you just want, want to really make sure they're filled. They all go behind your line art. So we see that version of filling for flats, this version of filling for flats, and the lasso version of filling for flats. Right? But ultimately it gives you all the same once the line art's on top. Now why do I mention those? Well, because when you have areas that are open like this, actually that one's nicely contained, so I can select that. Sometimes you need to, to fill it first with the paintbrush or with something else. And remember, this is what I call the kill whitey phase, which means we just got to get most of this filled in, even if it's with random colors that will change later. So I have some feathers, I've got some sunbeams. I want to fill all this stuff in. Some darker orange. When you're doing flatting, you don't even need to worry too much about what the colors are, just as long as they're selectable later. But it's a good way of kind of introducing yourself to the image. Now remember, I rasterized a version of my line art. And that's for my open spaces, like here. So here I want to have kind of a, a more vibrant blue. So I'm going to use my brush. And I'm going to paint that in to cover those gaps. All right, so it's easy to select. Then go to flat color and fill in. Otherwise, it would fill in way more than I want it to. Other places with gaps, I have this ribbon running through in the bright cyan. That ribbon comes through the bottom as well. So I want to find that cyan. And I want to use my brush and on my rasterized line art layer. I'm going to deselect and then paint that in. just to connect these black lines with other black lines. So that I can select it with the magic wand in these two areas and go to my flat color layer and fill it in. And when I turn off that rasterized layer, it looks nice and clean, but I gotta make sure it's filled in. All right, and it kind of carries that blue throughout, even though that color might change. I can do that same technique here on the, the sunbeam. Use my brush. Maybe pick a brighter orange for this. Deselect. Connect the black. Don't worry about going over because you're going to use your vector line art anyway. But it kind of shows you where you want the color to be. Actually, maybe I'll use red for this. It's going to be way too strong, but you'll see how it works. And then use the magic wand, select these different spaces, holding down shift. Go 
to my flat color layer. So the only problem with that rasterized line art layer is you can accidentally fill it uh, or edit it by filling color there instead of on your flat color layer. And you don't want to do that. You always want to color in the right place. Yeah, so those reds are effective. They're a little, a little gaudy, but that's okay. Then when I still have that red, I can even just go right to my flat color. And I'll show you how this works. If I want this stripe to be red, right, I can just connect it by painting, cut through it, and then I can just use the paint bucket and change those to red. So that's what's so great about flatting is now on my flat color layer, I can just willy-nilly change any color I want just by clicking on it with the paint bucket because they're each independent, free-floating shapes. That are just connected by my line art. But I gotta make sure I kill whitey first. I gotta get rid of all the the white. So that I can select everything. And if I'm in a real hurry, I can just do this. Select everything that's self-contained within reason. Just fill it all in with one color for the time being. Oh. And then I can even add to it with my lasso and get these fussy little bits. Because this is a fairly complex illustration, lots of different parts. Step one is to get rid of all the whites. And then I want to fill it with a different kind of color, maybe kind of a neutral. Uh, let's see. I guess that one, why not? And you can always alter your color just by going, clicking on the foreground color and putting it in. So let's see, let's make it color like that. Okay, so that just kind of banked, colored all of that. Oh, I'm just missing this. Anything else? Okay, good. So now I've got flat color, but it's not exactly finished yet. If I duplicate my white background and then fill it with gray, edit fill 50% gray. That will show me if I have any whites. It would fill them in with solid gray. And it looks like nothing has solid gray in it. So I think I'm good. Oh, I spoke too soon. Missed that little spot, right? So I want to fill that in with flat color. So make sure you, you get rid of all the white. So everything's on your flat color layer. And everything is, is individual. And now on that flat color layer, I can carve it up a little bit if I want to. So if I want this yellow, I can hold down option. I'm on my brush tool. And I can get that yellow and then I can paint it. 